What is going on guys, it's Modded Warfare here, welcome back to another PS4 tutorial, or I say tutorial, but well I guess it's kind of a tutorial. Um, so in this video I'm going to be showing you guys uh, the peak poke tool in PS4 AIO. So this is a tool that I made um, with help from XCX Solutions, and we basically, the idea behind this tool was to basically combine uh, all the stuff I've made for, from uh, for PS4s, 1.76 PS4s in the past, and combine them into one tool. Uh, peak poke tool is not something I've made before, so that was actually quite interesting, coding a peak poke tool for the first time. Um, but yeah, I wanted to show you guys this. Um, it should be a good improvement over uh, the PS4 Me one, which I believe is the only one, the only other peak poke tool that's currently released um, for uh, 1.76 PS4s. So yeah, let's go ahead and get into this. Now I showed the console tools off in the previous episode, um, or I say episode, the previous video. Um, so if you haven't watched that, then I'll probably link it in the description or at the end of uh, at the end of the video. So anyway, let's go ahead and get into this. So with the peak poke tool, what you're going to want to do is first of all choose what API you want to use. Now you can either use the RTE payload, which is the same payload that uh, the mod tools use or you can use uh, ps4 me which is more stable for you know peak poke um, because you know you can read much larger amounts of memory at once and it's more stable i find with the rte payload if i peak too many bytes over and over again um, it eventually just gives up and stops reading memory at completely which is kind of retarded but i mean i don't know that's just the way it is so uh with the ps4 me tool it's it PS4 me payload is a bit more stable. So I'm going to use that for this example. So we've got the code execution waiting for payload. All you do is inject the payload and you get the little message that pops up. And once that message kind of fades out, that's pretty much as much time as you need to wait. And then we can go ahead and start a game. So I'm going to go ahead and start Advanced Warfare and use that as an example. Okay, so here we are on the game. Once we're on the game, you can go ahead and connect. PS4 me and you'll get that new connection and then the drop down list will appear which contains all the processes that are currently running on your PS4 you want to select uh, the elf file for the actual game which in my case will be default MP elf which is of course the multiplayer uh, elf file for advanced warfare and then you just click attach and that will attach to that process and once you're attached you can start peaking memory Okay, so since we're in the game now, all you got to do is just peek an address. Um, make sure you're selecting the right API, um, because if I select PS4 RTE and then click peek, it's just going to give me an error. So I select, I've put in an address here, and I can click peek, and boom, it grabs uh, all of those bytes up to the length that I specified. And I can go further, I can do a thousand bytes, let's peek a thousand, so even more stuff. So. Yeah, basically there's quite a few things you can do in here. Um, so for example, we've got quite a few features. So first things first, uh, obviously you've got your base address, which is the start address um, that you're wanting to read memory from. Then you've got the length, so how much bytes you want to uh, read or peak. Um, then you've got selected address, so as I click you can see the selected address changes. So that's just whatever address I'm currently clicked on. So this right here. So if I want to get to that exact byte right there, then I just have to copy this address because uh, that address is on this exact byte. And then also the base length is the length from the start address to wherever you're at. So, so you can see this is 160. So base length is 160 because I'm, I'm 160 down. If I go up here, so that's 16A. So it highlights 16A. So if you're wanting to make a tool and you're wanting to add, you know, uh, the base length to the base address then you get you know your you get to that exact point in memory so yeah that is a few things right there uh, other functions we've got here um, are the ability to dump window so that will just basically dump to your computer so I can do dump window so let's select this documents right here and I'll just call this dump um, I'll call it dot bin just so that hex editor recognizes it and if I go ahead and look in that directory now, in documents, we've got our dump in here. If I open that in hex editor, you can see that is the 
entire uh, memory that we've peaked that has been dumped to a file. So you can go ahead and use hex editor right there to search for stuff. And then also uh, you can of course also dump selection. So if I just you know select a bunch of bytes here and then I could do dump selection and then just call this again, I'll just call this dump dot bin. And then that time it will just dump up to 160 right there. So if we look in here, open this, you can see it only dumped down to 160. So you can do that. Now another thing you can do as well, if we open this up, is you can copy the bytes straight out of here as well. So if I want to just say copy these four lines right here, I can just right click copy and paste them in there. There you go. So you can copy and paste. And you can also invert color scheme. So if you don't like the way this looks, um, you can invert the color scheme so it's the other way around. So you've got black, uh, black on white background, or I kind of prefer the the white on kind of black background for me. But of course, if you prefer the other way, you can just swap it by clicking that. Uh, then we've also got a search feature as well, which actually works quite well. So. If I want to search for FF07, because there's a lot of FF07s in here. So if I want to search for FF07, all I have to do is search for sequence of bytes, put in FF07 and click search and it finds the first one. And then I can click next occurrence to find the next one, and the next one, the next one, and it will just keep going until it can't find any more. Just like that, it's grabbing them all. So that is the search feature. And you can also search for text as well. So if I peek a much larger amount of memory here and search for my gamer tag, change the search type to text string, and then I can search for my gamer tag, and boom, there's our there's my gamer tag right there. And I can click next occurrence, and that finds the next one. And there we go. So that's where my gamer tag is stored. Now, if I want to edit any value in here. Um, and it's probably not a good idea to just start editing and clicking poke because then I'm poking all 7,000 bytes and that's probably going to freeze or take a long time to poke. So the best thing to do is once you find an area in memory that you want to edit, you want to just grab the selected address, paste it into the base address and then maybe peek about 100 bytes or something um, so that it's less likely to freeze if you edit something. So if I go ahead and press back, you can see my gamer tag in here. And we're going to try and edit this. So let's edit my gamer tag to just change it to green. So I use the little symbol and two to make it green. Change it to modded warfare and poke. And there you go, it changes to green. So you can just poke memory directly. You can poke the text string directly or you can poke the bytes directly. Very, very easy. So yeah, that is pretty much it really. That is the... Um, that is the peak poke tool inside uh, inside PS4 AIO. Uh, there's also an auto update feature as well. Uh, and there's nothing in here that's really changing, but uh, if you tick this box, it updates the, the view in real time. So if there was anything that was constantly changing, like there's probably a timer that's counting down how many seconds the game's been on for. Um, if, you, if you click auto update, it will show that changing in real time. So you can do that. Again, you don't want to do that when you're peaking like 7,000 or 8,000 bytes because it's probably going to like lag the game a bit. Oh, you can see that changed right there. Just this first second right there, that changed. Oh, there you go, it's changed again. So that keeps changing. That one byte right there keeps changing to 26. Keeps changing from, what, 25, 26. So yeah, as you can see, it changes it, it updates it in real time. If you have auto update, but yeah, that's basically it. There's also a decimal to hex a decimal conversion. So, you know, if I type in 255, then that's FF. If I type in, I don't know, let's say A to uh, B F or something, then it gives you the decimal can uh, equivalent. So yeah, that's basically that. And again, like I said, you can also use PS4 RTE payload as well. Um, I'm not sure if I'll be able to show you this because we're already in, already injected that. Yeah, no, um, I won't show you trying to do do it with PS4 RTE payload, but it does work with PS4 RTE payload as well. Um, but of course, again, 
uh, it's it's not as stable when it comes to peaking memory as uh, the PS4 Me one is. But yeah, that is basically the um, peak poke tool in uh, PS4 AIO. If you enjoyed the video or found the information useful, go ahead and leave a like and subscribe if you haven't subscribed already. And go ahead and feel free to download the tool and try it out. Uh, the link is in the video description. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.